can't change anything, Asia. You know, all we can do is just go with what we are. You can't go with what you are. Have you read the papers? Do you know what everybody says? It's suicide. You've seen him. You know how strong he is. You can't win. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and every once in a while, my good friend Eric Breen joins me here on the channel, and it's always just a nice conversation. It's, you know, we always have a topic in mind, and today we're going to talk about five broken comic book superheroes. There, you know, there's a little couple of Easter eggs. I think this week it'll be pretty easy to figure out the five characters that we're going to talk about. And obviously, here to talk with me about this is the man so cool they call him the Breen. Eric Breen, how are you doing? Pretty good, Wes. How are you today? I'm doing excellent. You know, we, we did a little love fest on Robert Venditti and Hawkman last week, so we need, to, we need to go talk about some stuff that isn't working right now. So there were several characters, and, you know, we had a big list of, like, I don't know, 10. We had to compare it down, so we ended up with three Marvel characters, two DC characters. And I think, for the most part, all the, the one thing that all these characters – there's one outlier that really have in common is they have terrible creative teams on them for the most part. And it's been that way for quite a while. Although, you know, every there's been a couple of reprieves, you know, especially for like Superman here and there. But for the most part, it's bad creative decisions have ruined the characters. And a few of these characters have been saved multiple times. And, it, you know, they, they just the new creative team comes in and just trashes the character again. Now, um, uh, I don't know. Before we get into the details, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy these conversations. Give us a thumbs down if you don't. I know it's going to be a, a veritable green love fest in the comment section, but if you enjoy yours truly, you know, give me a shout out too because trust me, there's going to be 150 comments talking about how you need to have more breed on the channel and can you just let him have the, the entire platform? No, he can't have my channel, but he can have it, you know, once a week for about 20, 25 minutes. So let's get into this. So I've got the five characters lined up. And the first one we're going to talk about has had a long history. He's uh, been in done in by some civil war, some personal demons, and a lot of origin changes. And he is Tony Stark. I've seen the footage. The only thing you really fight for is yourself. You're not the guy to make the sacrifice play, to lay down on a wire and let the other guy crawl over you. I think I would just cut the wire. Always a way out. Now, Tony Stark, Iron Man, is you know, is a, a uh, Stan Lee's attempt to make like a billionaire into a superhero type figure, and he was always kind of flawed. He is arrogant. Uh, he does have a drinking problem, like that, and things like that. But I don't know. For some reason, it has been so long. It feels like Civil War was the final nail in the coffin when he essentially became the bad guy. And I don't know that the characters ever fully recovered from that. But, you know, Eric, it, it goes back longer than that. They've just been destroying this character for 20 years now, maybe even longer. <clears throat> yeah, you know, this character, you know, he was he was created as a tragic figure who had to wear a chest plate in order to survive because he had shrapnel moving ever closer to his heart. He was, despite his arrogance, he was, this, this taught him humility. He, you know, he was always the guy that, that made first he was a weapons manufacturer, then he switched over to you know more more benevolent you know, uses of his fortune. He stepped aside and let the woman he loved marry someone that she knew he knew was going to be better for her. So he, he was you know more selfless than selfish for years. And it's it seems like and, and yes, he did have alcoholism to deal with in a tremendous story arc that you know, spanned years. But he, in the last 20 years, yeah, I would say it started with Civil War and they wanted him to be the bad guy. I'm not sure that he was, but th he was definitely the one you were supposed to side against. And then he had a couple more good years, but it seemed like when, when they made the decision to have his he he was adopted when they made that decision and then a couple, within a couple of years you had civil war 2 where i think captain marvel even killed him or something mm -hmm. but he you know the worst thing that ever happened to him i think was the movie because then every writer since then wrote him as robert downey jr now it worked when matt fraction did it because they were in the middle of a really good storyline that was going company wide at the time but ever since then, 
he's become the the guy he, he's that rich guy you want to hate he's now he's just someone that all the other characters use to get things out of while they're making fun of him for being rich and white and the current series he has is just an excuse to be lectured by hellcat every 30 days this character is i i don't know it's going to take a hell of an effort to bring him back from what's being done what's been done to him and they keep kind of doing the same thing over and over to him. How many times can you kill Tony Stark? How many times can it be revealed that he's an AI? Obviously, that's what happened in Iron Man 2020. We all just watched the Marvel 616 uh, docuseries on Dan Slott, who was the Iron Man writer until Christopher Cantwell took over recently. And, you know, that is one of the worst modern Marvel events I have ever read. And, you know, every payoff on it was awful and is like, like how many times, it, you know, when they when Slop riding back, he was like subservient to Jocasta and every other female character, and they decided he needed a big Iron Man family. You know, it, it, Iron Man never really felt like the family book, and if it was a family book, he should be at the head of the family in charge. And um, I don't know, he's just, I don't, I don't know that they can fix the character anymore because they just continuously drop the ball over and over for years now. Well, there, there there's a it's it's philosophical differences at this point the people that write the the comics for this company they don't see tony stark the way whether it's you know mike friedrich or archie goodwin or denny o'neill hell even you know larry lieber i mean it, they just see him differently now and i agree i i don't know if there's any coming back for him at this point Probably not. So the next character we're going to talk about was at a very recent character assassination at the hands of Cecil Castellucci, but her, her issues go back farther than that as well. Let's talk about Batgirl. And you are? Batgirl. That's not awfully PC. What about bad person or bad woman? Bruce, it's me, Barbara. I found the Batcave. Obviously, Batgirl, Barbara Gordon, has been a part of the Bat family for a very long time, established character. But, you know, d during the 80s and 90s, uh, there was a big change for the character. She was paralyzed, came back as Oracle, and it, found like the, it felt like the character really found her place. And that's really, uh, in my opinion, where the character was her strongest, had her best stories that were Barbara Gordon-centric. Why did they ever decide to bring her back as Batgirl? I'm guessing that was something Gail Simone lobbied for and was able to get. And you know, New 52, which was supposed to be a, a a restart of sorts, where pretty much every character other than Batman and Green Lantern were going to be radically altered. And this was a chance to make a strong female character, not realizing that she already was one. Well, not only a strong female character, a strong female disabled character. It's not like, you know, we have Daredevil over in the Marvel Universe, a very strong disabled character. And that was kind of like the one that DC had. And they had to undo it. I'll never understand it. And then once they 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 did the change and she was back to Barbara Gordon Batgirl, she's just, she's been wandering, you know, like in a, on a path to nowhere. No one knows what to do with the character. There's already so many Robins. It's hard to kind of fit her in there. I enjoy it when she normally I enjoy it when she has is interacting with Nightwing and they do things together. But other than that, it feels like a forgotten character that DC characters comics don't care about care really about. Obviously, there was never more evident when they decided to put Cecil Castellucci on the character to finish out the rebirth run at issue 50. And issue 50 is I don't you said it was the worst comic book you've ever read. I you know, I still need time because it, it was so bad. And there's so much. Uh, character assassination done to her, um, but it's it's quite apparent that DC could care less about Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, and having a strong female character. Well, who is Batgirl? Is she, you know, Oracle, the 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 brains behind the DC universe, the behind the scenes person that gets everybody where they need to go? Is she the kick ass female superhero of Gail Simone? Is she the Remember when she moved to Burnside and and apparently lost about 10 years off of her age on the way there? <laughs> and now they she 
came back. And the, the sad thing is, is you know, good writers on the on the bat titles write her well, whether it's Tynan or Tomasi. And I will even I've even given Cecil Castellucci credit for writing some decent issues leading up to issue 50. But now I realize that was because she was writing part of an event. So she had to put other people's Tynan ideas. Tynan was in telling there. her what she needed yeah, to do. And she didn't have free reign until she got to issue 50. And then, who boy, did she have free reign in issue 50. Yeah, and apparently Barbara Gordon is, is now a father-hating, uh, homicidal maniac-loving uh, activist that basically puts everyone in their place and if she gives, if she helps you out, she lets you know you better get your flu shot or else. Yeah, and then the, the same month, I think she was in one of the other Bat books, being written well again. So, who is who is Bat Girl? I, I don't even know anymore, and I'm I don't think they do either. Absolutely not. So let's get back over to Marvel Comics and another character that has a long history of, of character de de deconstruction where. He had an established persona as, as Charles Xavier, Professor X, essentially the heart and soul of the X-Men. And then, you know, they, they they made a couple of decisions to where he did some deceitful things. And it's just, he's been on a like a, a winding road to, to just near villain them ever since then. I said, make way! The new Quesalupa from Taco Bell! Get it with chicken, get it with steak, but with the cheese baked right in the shell. It's the next big thing. Go now while supplies last. So, I mean, what is the original sin with the Professor Xavier? Is it when you find out that he kind of mind wiped Cyclops so he didn't remember his brother? Or do you think it even goes back further than that? I, I mean, I've read X-Men for decades, and Charles Xavier was always the man that had the dream of peaceful coexistence between you know humans and mutants and despite all the setbacks you know, nothing caused him to waver from that and it's been again in the 21st century it's like they've undone everything that made him almost like the 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 moral compass of the marvel universe in some ways even when they had him as a member of the illuminati he wasn't there when the decision was made to send the Hulk into space. And he was asked, you know, um, the, the Hulk asked him when he came back, said, how would you have voted? And he said, read my mind. You know, it's open to you. He realized he would not have. So he was always the guy. He was always the one that saw the best in every situation. That is far from the case now. He's become, I, I would say, a, a, a racist. A segregationist, a despot, um, and you know, the, the, I think the latest one, even last week, when he tells Franklin that you're not a mutant, so you're not welcome on Krakoa. That's not Charles Xavier. That's not the man that would accept anybody who needed help into his institute. So, you know, who is this guy? Yeah, he's he's a manipulator. He's a liar. <laughs> and now we, we have he's somebody that has gone against his own dream and is essentially um, gone full force ahead and acting Magneto's dream or Apocalypse's dream of, of mutant su superiority over everything, you know, as, as he's running back, you know, like black market drug deals with his medicines and everything so we can hold it over, you know, the, the world powers and their economy and stuff like that. And, and, and that even what he did to Reed Richards in the X-Men Fantastic Four where Reed Richards had, had uh, play, put a marker on Franklin Richards so he couldn't go through the to the gates of Krakoa. He, like, masked his X gene, and Charles went in there, and, and he erased it from his mind, and he goes, I want you, I'm going to let you remember that I did this to you. It was, just, it was like I was sick to my stomach when I read that part. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the few Marvel series I've actually read recently, and I, I saw it said, this again, this is not Charles Xavier. Now, it's one thing to have Magneto go back and forth in his belief on you, know, like whether he's he believes in you know mutant superiority or peaceful coexistence. Charles Xavier was that steady influence that probably allowed someone like you know Magneto to walk the path of righteousness 
for it as often as he does because he's always going to have that conflict. Xavier was never supposed to have that, and now he does. And I would say him behaving the way he is behaving now is worse than what Magneto has done because you kind of expect that with him. But with Xavier, he was always supposed to be that constant, and that's just gotten lost somewhere. He's definitely not true north in the in the Marvel Universe anymore. No. He's, <laughs> like, I don't know where he's pointing. Like, who is Charles Xavier? I don't even think Marvel knows anymore. <laughs> so the next character is one that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, he had a major reset, I believe, in the 80s under John Byrne. Kind of fixed the character moving forward. But they always want to tinker with him because every every writer says you can't write a good Superman story. He's too boring. So they're always messing with it. And what are the characteristics of Clark Kent? He's weak. He's unsure of himself. He's a coward. Clark Kent is Superman's critique on the whole human race. Sometimes I think too many of the, the writers on Superman maybe watched Kill Bill Volume 2 too many times and have that very um, grim outlook on Clark Kent, Superman, the character. And Obviously, during the New 52, the character was severely changed and altered, summarily rejected by Superman fans. He had a weird, I think he had a motorcycle. He might have had a mullet. Maybe he was uh, rocking like a muscle shirt and stuff like that. But Dan Jurgens, right before they did Rebirth, kind of fixed the character. He and Lois, well, they kind of got rid of that version of Superman. They brought in another Superman from another multiverse. He and Lois had a child. We got Rebirth Superman, and that in Action Comics and Super Sons was like a re rejuvenation of the character. He was revitalized. We were getting great stories again. But then once again, they had to bring in Brian Michael Bendis, and he absolutely gutted the character. Yeah, um, that that intro, what a load of crap. Yes, yeah, Clark, <laughs> it's the most cynical bullshit. I'm a cynic, and I, I think that's yeah, cynical. Yeah, Clark Kent was... Superman's refuge from being Superman. Now, for years, the, the the he was he was the mild reporter from a great metropolitan newspaper. That was his cover. And then, fifty years into his character, Byrne changed that. Said, "Why can't Clark Kent be cool?" And we found out. Well, he could, and he was. And unfortunately, that got undone in the early 21st century by Mark Wade and you know, Jeff Johns, actually, because they preferred the Silver Age, you know, sniveling Clark Kent. But they at least understood that he wasn't, you know, he, he wasn't a coward. And this was just how he kept suspicion off of him. And then we, you know, shit, you know, fast forward to Rebirth. What a great take on that character. It was the best since Byrne. And I would say, you know, if it's, one and one a giving him a family what a, what a great idea and then they can't leave well enough alone they hire the the three named person and he just takes a massive dump on everything that fans liked about the character now you you look at clark lois and john i'm going to refer to a two issue series their story in Superman declaration. Do you remember that when the family vacation where they took Jonathan to all the mm -hmm. historical monuments to show him why it was, you know, how, why it was great to be an American. Yep. Old fashioned road trip in an RV. Yeah. And if you can look at that family dynamic and then look at, at, at Bendis's, which is a, a meek subservient, the kind of guy that would let his son go off with his crazy grandfather, let his wife go off with him, let her come back and sneak around behind his back and be totally accepting of it. His wife is a see you next Tuesday and his son is an angsty teen. If you can honestly tell me that that version is better than what Jurgens and Tomasi was giving us, then this Superman is for you. It sure as hell isn't for me. <laughs> I don't think it's for anybody. Everybody hates that Superman. So the last one, obviously, well, she's for a very prominent on the thumbnail is going to be Captain Marvel. The character as Miss Marvel, 
very interesting. They essentially killed the character. I believe it was in Avengers 200. Chris Claremont came in once again for the save, fixed the character moving forward, and recently they decided to destroy her. They pushed her too hard, too fast, and then they made her essentially the villain. And she killed Tony, Tony, Tony Stark in Iron Man, or I'm sorry, in Civil War II. Captain Marvel. If we do this, how do we know it's going to end any differently than it did before? Because before you didn't have me. Hey, new girl. Everybody in this room is about that superhero life. So how many times can you fix it? You bring the character from the brink and, and fix her. Now, I think Civil War II was a, a very terrible decision. That was a bad place to put a character that had a little bit of buzz. But if you look at a lot of the, the creative teams on, on Captain Marvel, since she's become Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers came from Captain Marvel. It's, you know, it's Kelly Sudeconic, it's Kelly Thompson. It's, it's it's a game of bad creators. And you can see how Marvel has got stuck in this rut with this character that they want to push to the moon that no one's willing to accept because they hate her guts. And that wasn't always the case. You know, Ms. Marvel, although not a, never an A-lister, was a, was an interesting concept. In the very beginning, she didn't even know that she was Ms. Marvel. And she had her series in the late 70s made some appearances in the Avengers, but there weren't any long range plans for. Her. So the, the pregnancy idea that, that was a misstep, no question, but they, it was, they were basically finished with the character. Then it said Claremont found a way to, you know, bring her back. And when we found out what had happened to her, that set up a conflict between Carol Danvers and rogue that would last for decades and it was central to her character, even when she became binary. That was an interesting take on the character. Eventually, she became Ms. Marvel again. She went through a bout with alcoholism. Tony was her sponsor. They had a connection. Of course, I'm sure whatever writer made the decision to have her kill him had no idea any of this stuff had happened. Hell, she was, was the ben leader. Bendis, right? He wrote Civil War too. She was the leader. Well, he should know then because you know she was the leader of the Mighty Avengers. She was a good character. The Brian Reed Ms. Marvel series was very, very well done. But then someone decided that she couldn't be sexy anymore, couldn't be Ms. Marvel. They had to make her Captain Marvel. And from day one to whenever she you know, her, she became more mannish, more powerful. Hell, I had to check today to make sure she hadn't been given any power upgrades because usually there's one a week. I'm bleeding cool. Oh, yeah, they had the, the storyline where she basically stole Thor's hammer, stole Iron Man's hired suit, you know, stole uh, you know Black Panther's testicles. You know, just Of course, they were all clones of them, so she didn't she wasn't doing it to the real heroes, but it was clones of them with the same powers, just so they could show that she is the mightiest hero. And uh, I, Have you read any of these? Like, I, I was reading some of them. It's just, it, it's the weirdest thing. Everyone in those comic books tells Captain Marvel how amazing she is. That is essentially the core uh, struggle in a Captain Marvel comic is how many times can the other characters reaffirm to her how amazing she is? Well, that's become a, a, a trope in Marvel comics. All, all female characters have to be emotionally validated, whether it's by themselves or by everyone around them. And you don't get any conflict with them anymore. It's, you know, hell... I'm waiting for the story where where Rogue and Carol become besties and you know go out for karaoke because <laughs> it, it it doesn't matter anymore. You know, it, you know, Captain Marvel will going forward only be written by female writers because that's that's a thing now. And but it, it, which would would be fine if they were writers that gave her you know conflict, which is what comic books are supposed to be. There's there's no hero's journey. With Carol Danvers at this point, she's, she's whatever the writer wants to write her as, and how writers see themselves through her and how, how they wish they could be. And this character is so flawed. There may be comebacks for a few of the people we've talked about. This one's done. She murdered Tony Stark in an enormous Marvel Comics event. It was never treated as if she wasn't the greatest hero ever. Yeah, and, and since then he's done things for her and she just makes fun of him, which I guess yeah. is better than killing him again. 
Nah, she should just kill him again. Put him out of his misery. Put him out of ours. Absolutely. All right, so that's our take. Five broken comic book superheroes. We've got Captain Marvel, Tony Stark, Iron Man, Batgirl, Superman, uh, Professor X. Let us know in the comments section, what character do you think is broken? Did we have a good list? Did we have all the reasons right? Did we miss something? We want to hear from you guys. And you don't just have to tell Breen how great he is. And I'll be I'll be the first to admit, he is glowing today. He looks amazing. And he certainly sounded like a million bucks. But you can, you can, you can shoot me a compliment, too. Your boy's still here. 